If you don't submit, you cannot resist. You must submit before you can resist. You must submit. Submit your control today. Your control. Say, I don't have control to buy cigarettes. You submit your soul. You submit your will. You say, ah, I don't have control for myself. It's God that is controlling me. You submit yourself. Because there is somebody that is in charge of your body. I appreciate you for following this series on destiny and life. Destiny and Life is a program that we feature every Friday for restoration. One of the mission of this, um, this mission is restoration. The name of this mission is the Revival and Restoration Global Mission. It is an arm of the church that deals with a rescue mission. Restoration is a rescue mission. We want to rescue the lost. We want to men to be reconciled back to God. We want men to be restored back to the original position. And that's one of the ministry that is in this mission. And this destiny and life is under that ministry. Today we are looking at how to overcome drug addiction. Drug addiction. How to overcome drug addiction. That's one of our ministry in this mission. How to overcome drug addiction. When we talk about addiction, addiction is common among us. Because we are human beings, we are being controlled by the power of the prince of the air, which is Satan. But thank God for those of us that have received Christ into our life. We are no longer under such control. But even if we are not under such control, our flesh is still there. So we need to mortify the flesh. Because that's what the Bible tells us, to mortify the flesh. Today, we are looking at how to overcome drug addiction. There are a lot of addiction. Womanizing is addiction. Talkativeness is addiction. Drug, taking of misuse of drug, taking drugs, smoking marijuana is addiction. You know, anything you do, and you are doing it, you don't have control over your spirit. You don't have control over yourself. You find out that your flesh is superseding your spirit. Your flesh is the one controlling. That thing is an addiction. You cannot stop it. You can't resist it. Some people can some people are called sex mania. They cannot do without intercourse for a day. Even if it is animal, that's an addiction. Addiction can occur in different forms. But today we are looking at drug addiction. Drug addiction. You are there, you are watching me today, you will overcome drug addiction in Jesus' name. Addiction can be addiction for drugs. And that's what we are looking for today. Drug addiction can be you are used, you are used to smoking India M. You smoke uh, uh, cocaine. You, you take alcohol excessively. You can't control yourself. You are into marijuana, you are into heroin, uh, that's drug addiction. And then sometimes you, particular drugs in the pharmacy, you go there, you buy, you take codeine. The one that is raining among the youth is the codeine. They take codeine. All those things are drug addiction. How do you overcome it? Because your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. That's what the Bible says. The Bible tells us that our body is not our own. So God has put us as custodian to manage the body. God cannot come from heaven to manage it for you. And one of the ways to manage it is to check what goes into you. If you are smoking, you are destroying your lungs. You are destroying your liver. You are destroying your health. If you are there, you are, you are always taking alcohol, you are destroying your body, you are exposed to diabetics. So you need to know 
that you can overcome drug addiction. You can. That's what we want to look at today. So if you are there, prepare your mind. You can overcome drug addiction. The first thing of all that I think you should do, and I've experienced it from people, is walking, is sincerity. Sincerity. I've met a man that is a drug addict, but he was sincere with himself. He told himself, this thing is not good. He told people, this thing is not good. I want to stop it. I don't like it. He was sincere with himself. Some people are not sincere. You meet them, why are you taking alcohol? Ah, alcohol is good for the body. It makes you strong. It makes you healthy. And if you tell them this alcohol is not good, they oppose you. They are not sincere. They have forgotten that this alcohol can give you diabetes. It can destroy your liver. It can put you to danger. You take it excessively. That's drug addiction. Let me show you a verse in the Bible that will boost your faith and take you from the level where you are, the level of argument, to the level where you are sincere. In the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 24, we are going to read that verse, and I'm going to extend it to today's topic. Because many people are not sincere, that's why they are not able to come out of drug addiction. Sincerity is number one. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 24, Grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen. When you are sincere, you will receive grace to overcome that drug addiction. What do we mean when we will say sincerity? It means you speak the truth to your mind, and your mind also echo the truth back to you. You tell yourself the truth. You speak the truth to people out there. Don't pretend. Many people are pretending, and that's why they remain in drug addiction. That's why they remain addicted to that drugs. Because they are not sincere. You have to be able to, 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 to come out with sincerity and say, this thing, I want to stop it. I, and I'm sincere. This thing is not good for my body. I'm sincere. It's damaging my liver. It's damaging my health. It's causing diabetes. It's causing this. That's sincerity. That's number one. Number two, self-determination. No matter how you want to do it, if you don't have self-determination, you cannot make it. You have to be determined. When we say self-determination, there are two components that make up self-determination. One is consistency. The other one is perseverance. Consistency is that you, you, you become consistent in doing things that will make you avoid taking the drugs. Then perseverance is, it might happen that you fall, maybe by mistake. Maybe by mistake. You were not equipped with enough word of God that day and you fall. Don't give back. Don't say, I'm falling. I, that's the end. You start to weep. No. You have to remember the word of God that tells us that even if we sin, we have an advocate, which is Jesus. I'm not saying sin, no. But even if it happens along the line, from experience, there are some people that are taking drugs. At the time when they are self-determined, the flesh does not want. The day they didn't read enough Bible, they fall. And then the flesh say, hey, you are fall. The devil says, hey, you are for Because the work of the devil is to accuse you. The devil is an accuser of brethren. That's what the Bible tells us. In the book of Revelation chapter 12, verse 10, he accuses you day and night. So he will accuse you and make you feel guilty. And make you feel there's no hope. There's hope. You have to persevere. So the two components of self-determination, consistency and perseverance. You persevere and say, no, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. I will not remain in these drugs. You confess it. You say it. Number three is expose your drug addiction. Don't cover it. Secrecy will give your drug addiction power over you. You have to expose it. You have to expose it. When you expose it, you will be relieved in your mind. You will be healed in your heart. That's what the Bible says in the book of James. Let's open our Bible to the book of James. 
The Bible has solution to all problems. Many people are not aware that there is solution to drug addiction. And that's what I'm giving you now. The third principle is the principle of exposure. Expose the drug addiction. Confess it to your, to your pastor. Confess it to your reverend father. Confess it to the reverend. Confess it to the general overseer. Confess it to the brethren. Even if they laugh at you, that's, that's their own. You have confessed it. You will have freedom in your spirit. You will have relief in your spirit. There is need for you to expose drug addiction. If you are engaging marijuana, I so I take uh, marijuana. I'm not happy about it. As you expose it, you are relieving your heart. Oh, I take alcohol. I'm not happy about it, and I know God will do it. I am determined. Yes. In James chapter 5, verse 16, confess your fault one to another and pray one to another that ye may be healed. You can be healed from drug addiction when you confess it, when you say it to people. You say it to your pastor, you say it to your mama, you say it to your papa, you say it to your priest, whoever that is in charge of your soul. When you confess it, you see yourself being relieved. You say it to Frederick brethren, you see yourself being healed. Healing is coming for somebody. Healing, I say healing is coming for you in Jesus' name. When you expose it, then you can be able to submit. That's what you call submission of your soul. Submission of your willpower. Every human being has a willpower. We have a willpower because God gives us ability to choose. We are not robots. You are a free moral agent. You can choose whatever you like, but choose what is right. Choose life so that you may live. You have to submit your control to God. Submit your willpower to God. Consigning addiction. You go to God and say, God, I submit my soul, my spirit, my body, my heart, my will, everything. That's what the Bible says. Let us look at the scripture. In that same James chapter 4 verse 7, it says, Submit! Submit! You have to submit. You that is watching me, you are into alcohol. Submit! Submit yourself. Submit your control unto God. Submit it. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. When you submit your willpower, you say, oh, don't hold your will and say, eh, alcohol is good for the body. No, that's a wrong concept. That's insincerity. Don't hold your will and say, I don't think I can make it. That's lack of self-determination. Because I told you, you must have self-determination. Don't hold your will by not confessing it to one another, by not exposing it. After you have done these three, then you, you submit. In James chapter 4, verse 7, Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Resist the devil. Resist. When you submit to God, then you have capacity to resist. If you don't submit, you can't resist. If you don't submit, you cannot resist. If you don't oppose, you cannot resist. One of the ways to have this supernatural intervention I've given you before, the second one is the one I'm giving you now. Submit your control to God. Submit your control. Submit your control. When you submit, you receive supernatural grace. I've given you the former one. When you expose, you receive relief in your spirit. You receive grace to resist. You receive grace for healing inside of you when you expose. Now, when you submit your will, you will receive supernatural grace to overcome that drug addiction. Now, number five is brokenness. Many people are no longer broken. The Bible tells us that because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Many believers are waxing cold. Those that have gone back into their sin are roaming inside sin. They are ruminating. And some of them come to me and say, ah, they need deliverance. I tell them, you are the source of your deliverance. If you can be broken, if you can be broken, brokenness will take you to the level of receiving grace to a measure that will help you to overcome whatever addiction that is disturbing your life. Brokenness. 
That's why the Bible says in Psalm 51 verse 17, what God wants from you before God can give you grace is brokenness. In verse 17, the sacrifice of God are a broken spirit and a broken and a contrite heart, O oh God, thou will not despise. God is despising many drug addicts, many people that are addicted to drugs because they have no brokenness. And because of that, they don't receive grace. They say, but I came out for outer core. Yes, you came out of for outer core, but there's no brokenness. That's why John told the Pharisees, Sadducees, all those religious people and all those people that believe they are the one that is chosen by God. In Matthew chapter 3, Matthew chapter 3, verse 16 to 18, he said they should bring forth fruit meant for what? Repentance. What type of fruit do you have? Do you have fruit that is meant for repentance? Brokenness is a fruit for repentance. Broken heart, contrite spirit, contrite heart, broken spirit. This is the fruit of the of for repentance. When you have a broken heart, then God will now help you. God will help you. He will comfort you. He will help you. Let me read it for you. Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3 verse 16 and Jesus okay before we get to verse 16 there's a verse that I want you to read Matthew chapter 3 is very very important that you bring forth yes verse 8 Matthew chapter 3 verse 8 he said, bring forth, therefore, fruits meant for repentance. That's why many people are not able to, fail, to overcome the addiction. There's no fruit for repentance. There's no remorse. You smoke today. You, 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 are, you are smoking. I met a man in the, in, the, in the bank, and I said, sir, can I minister to you? Are you a Christian? He said, yes, he's a Christian. He's born again. He goes to church like that. You are just saying it. I said, but if you are a Christian, you will not be smoking. He said, that doesn't mean he smoke and he's born again. No, you have to bring forth fruit made for repentance by dropping that cigarette. He was carrying cigarette and yet it's possible he's an elder in the church. When you bring forth fruit made for repentance, then you can be comforted. That's why the Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 4, he said, blessed are they that mourn. Do you mourn for your sin? Do you weep for your sin? Peter mourned. Oh, and then grace came for Peter. Judas, he said of money, was busy, remorseful, but no, no uh, ability to change. You need to mourn to the point of repentance. Blessed are, blessed are they that mourn. For they shall be comforted. Comfort is coming for you if you are a drug addict. If you are, if you are into drug addiction, don't be afraid. Don't be worried. Settle your mind. Just be sincere. I tell you, by the authority of heaven, comfort is coming for you in Jesus' name. Jesus didn't come for the righteous people. In fact, Jesus came for those drug addicts. He came for those that they have, people have looked at you and said, Can this person repent? Is it possible for this person to be born again? Jesus will set you free today. That is, we have looked at number five, brokenness. Having seen brokenness, we go to the next stage. Many people are broken, but they need something that will help them to, to go higher than that level of brokenness. Because if you are broken and God gives you grace, that grace, for it to be sustained, for that grace to be sustained, you need to renew your heart. You need to constantly renew your heart. Do you renew your heart? What do you renew your heart with? You have, you have, you have, you have, you have, you have self-determination. You, you have exposed your drug addiction. You have broken heart. You have submit your control to God. You are sincere with yourself. But, that will be limited if you don't renew your heart. The heart is the battlefield of a man. 
If your heart is not constantly renewed with the word of God, you will find it difficult to overcome drug addiction. Let us go straight to the Bible. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. It says in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, that I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this word, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove that is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Be not, be not what? Conform to this word, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The renewing of your mind is what will sustain your transformation. It is what will sustain your ability to continue to overcome drug, that, drug addiction. It's what will sustain the ability to continue to overcome that alcohol that you are taking, that is messing up your life. When you continue to renew yourself with the word of God, begin to pick verses that will help you. When you find yourself becoming weak, you are tempted. You are tempted to take a little of that uh, heroin or cocaine. Remember the word of God. Remember the word of God. The word of God that we will remember is the one you have used over and over to renew your mind. For example, let's say you renew yourself with the book of James chapter 4 verse 7. You will say, resist the devil, he will flee away from you. Submit yourself unto God. Resist the devil. You will say, I resist the devil. The Lord said that you resist the devil. I resist you, alcohol. I resist you, marijuana. I resist you, you codeine. I resist you, heroin. I resist you, you tobacco. I resist you, uh, cigarette. I resist you. All the, when you are resisting, you are speaking. As you are speaking the word, he said, confession is made unto salvation. You are renewing your mind. As you are speaking the word, you are renewing your mind. You are gaining more grace, more grace, more energy, more power to overcome that drug addiction. Because drug addiction is a very stubborn thing. And you need to renew your mind daily. God requires us to live a consistent Christian life. The same thing with overcoming drug addiction. You need to live a consistent renewing mindset. Your mindset should be renewed and renewed with verses. When it appears as if you, are, you want to be weak, you remember the word of God in 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, that he that commits sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning of the world. Because of this, the Son of Man was manifested. To destroy the works of the devil, you now remember the works addiction is a work of the devil. Jesus has destroyed it for me. I cannot continue in sin. I am free. You begin to say it. When you say it, you are renewing your mind. If you do all these things and you, you don't change your friends, you may not be able to make it. Number six, you need to change your friends. What kind of friends are you keeping? The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33, that evil communication corrupts good manner. What, is, what good manner friend do you have? Keep to that. What type of friend do you follow? When you follow a friend that takes you to to club and you smoke, you drink, and then you humanize, and then you are you are now saying, I want to overcome drug addiction, and you have submit your heart to Christ, you have submit your soul to God, and then you are renewing yourself in the word of God. You have exposed yourself to the pastors and to the members. And then you, you have, you have, you have self-determination. And yet you still keep those friends. No, no, no. You need to remove some of those friends. Delete their numbers from your phone. Especially those ones that are difficult to change. Those ones that, that there are some that will make, want to make you to continue to remain. If, if you are smoking uh, Igbo, which we call marijuana, you are smoking it. 
and, and you have a friend that is smoking marijuana, he will not want you to be free. He will want to come and call you and say, let us go and go and buy marijuana and smoke. Go and beg. Go and steal to smoke. So you need to cut off those type of friends. You need to change friends. You need to begin to look for better friends. Evil communication corrupts good manner. Evil communication corrupts good manner. I'm saying it as a servant of God under this mission. To tell you that you need to change your friends. For you to sustain your overcoming ability, your overcoming power, overcoming grace, over drug addiction. Then, number seven, you need retreat. When we say retreat, not general retreat, not a retreat like general retreat. You need retreat, personal word, retreat. Bible tells us, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Shall renew their strength. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run, they shall not be weary. They shall walk, they shall not faint. Why are people fainting? After they say, I have forsake this drug, they will go back to it. Because they don't have personal retreat. They don't have time for personal retreat. There are times you fast, you pray. You can also join a Christian organization that are organizing camp meeting. By the time you go, but spend personal time for your prayer. By the time you go and come, you see your life is transformed more and more. That's number seven. Number eight is what we call walking in the spirit. You need to walk in the spirit. The Bible says walk in the spirit in Galatians chapter 5 verse 16 and you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. Smoking is a desire of the flesh. Taking uh, alcohol, excessive alcohol is a desire of the flesh. Taking codeine and marijuana is a desire of the flesh. Heroin is a desire of the flesh. So when you, you walk in the spirit, according to Galatians chapter 5 and 16, it is mandated that you will not walk in the flesh. So you must continue to walk in the spirit. Walking in the spirit is listening to the Holy Spirit. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Walk in line with the Holy Spirit. That's walking in the spirit. Then number nine, you need to fight a good fight of faith. Paul said, I fought a good fight of faith. There is battle between good and bad. There is battle between drug addiction and overcoming drug addiction. So you battle it. You fight a good fight of faith. Number 10, you need to fight a good warfare for your personal prophecy. Most of the people that you see that they find themselves in drug addiction are the ones that their personal prophecy has been threatened. For example, let me give you a vivid example. Let's say God has made you that you will be a governor of a state what the devil does is to manipulate something that you will like for example he can manipulate you will like marijuana every time you are smoking you see yourself you see yourself smoking the thing will be so interesting to you because they want to temper with that personal prophecy so you need to fight the battle joseph fought his own he overcome uh, immorality he fought his own Potiphar's wife wanted to tempt her. She said, no, no, I cannot do this against my God and my master. And he overcame. Daniel, fought his own, he stood by the God of Hebrew. And God overcome for him. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they fought their own. Paul fought his own. Paul said, I fought a good fight of faith. So you need to fight for your personal prophecy. And that's what Paul told Timothy in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 18. That she fight a good warfare. For his personal prophecy god bless you god will give you grace i pray for you that is into drug addiction if you are there you are into drug addiction you have not given your life to christ you have opportunity right now i want you to confess i'm going to pray for you i want you to confess that sin and you say after me lord jesus i'm sorry i have sinned against your temple i repent i turn away from it I confess my sin. Wash me with the blood of Jesus. I'm going to pray for you right now. Father, thank you for those that are repenting, those that are surrendering their life to you as they do, Lord. That alcohol in, in that life, I can't sue it in Jesus' name. That marijuana from today, I bind you, bind your power, and I command you, go in Jesus' name. Be free, be free, be free. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you.